What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. Now in the late 90s, Susan Hedgepeth, also known as Envy, and Kaya Phillips, also known as KP, came into the spotlight. Together they would go by the name KP and Envy. Now the first time KP entered the spotlight was when she joined the Capers. The Capers was an all-girl group and featured members Rashida, KP and Kiki. The group was managed by Kirk Frost and he signed them to his label around 1999 called D-Lo Entertainment where the group got to release their first album. The project was called The Capers and spawned two singles namely Don't Stop it's the infamous K to the P, so swing my way and you can shake for me baby and Just For You which featured Jermaine Dupri and the Brat. If you wanna know, wanna know real truth about my crew Come on. It's all about the dough you know Sipping champagne you do I think it's just for you now because the group was so new and was still bubbing under in Atlanta, the single they dropped failed to chart and by 1999 the group had disbanded. I was in a big girl rap group called The Capers and put an album out in like 98 and after that, people started growing up a little. We wanted to go in different directions. Just like that, The Capers were no more, Rashida went on to pursue a solo career and so did KP. And in fact, in the same year that The Capers dropped their debut album, KP teamed up with Susan Hedgepath, also known as Envy, to release a song called Swing My Way. The song appears on a compilation album from Atlanta called Rhythm and Quad. Swing My Way helped build the compilation's popularity and was one of the biggest songs on the project. Envy also appeared in another song called It's About Time. It's about time As of late, it appears like KP and Envy are not dropping any music and have seemingly faded from the spotlight. So the question is, what happened to KP and Envy? Let's find out. After KP and Envy dropped Swing My Way, the duo didn't really make much music together. KP was featured on a song called Close Range which came out around 2005. Envy was nowhere to be found on this song. Envy appeared on two songs on Little Zane's album The Big Zane Theory around 2003 and this time KP was nowhere to be found on the song. The thing is, even though KP and Envy had amazing chemistry when they performed together and recorded songs, that chemistry did not exist in real life. Now around 2005, Jermaine Dupri released Young Fly and Flashy Volume 1. Young, rich, black, flashy. The project peaked at number 43 on the Billboard 200, spawning the singles Gotta Getcha and I Think They Like Me. The project had some big name appearances, Bow Wow showed up, The Brat, and Jermaine Dupri was some of the heavyweights on this album. But guess who else made an appearance on this project? The duo who hadn't been seen since the late 90s, KP and MV, who made an appearance on a song called Put Your Hands Up. Now the song follows the overall theme of Young Fly and Flashy, Volume 1. The whole project is full of club songs and you can tell Put Your Hands Up was made strictly for the dance floor. It also almost sounds like a Destiny's Child song only with rapping. Needless to say the song was not a huge hit, it didn't manage to make many waves and once again KP and Envy's moment came and went. Unfortunately, this was their last major collaboration together as they went their separate ways swiftly after this moment. Now in the 2000s, Envy thought that she needed a rebrand and changed her name to Sue Lane. She also released an album around 2009 called Tell Me Why. The album didn't hit any billboard charts as it essentially had no hit records. After that Envy aka Sue Lane disappeared for a while and re-emerged once again around 2011 to perform Swing My Way at the A-Town Legends concert in Atlanta. She wasn't seen until 2012 when she appeared on BET's gospel singing talent competition Sunday's Best. She didn't make it very far in the competition as she only made it through the first round. After that Susan disappeared off the map like someone who owes you money. Now unlike Envy, KP remained relatively quiet throughout the years. She would do features here and there but as far as a full body of work goes, I don't think anybody was waiting for her to drop a solo album and thus it never came out. 
This applies to NV2. Swing My Way was such a catchy song that the song itself was bigger than the artists. Not that many people cared who was behind the song, and that made it hard for KP and NV to establish a career outside of that song. Around 2014, KP and NV made a resurgence again when their song was sampled by Seven Streeter and B.O.B. This version sounds very similar to the original and could almost be dubbed a remake. The song appeared on B.O.B's 2014 mixtape, No Genre, Part 2. That KP and NV sample was definitely starting to work wonders. Now around 2016, J. Cole released his fourth studio album, For Your Eyes Only. The album debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 and sold over 400,000 copies in the first week. Why am I talking about this album? Well, the first song of the project was called Deja Vu, a song that samples KP and Envy's hit, Swing My Way. Interestingly enough, Bryson Tiller sampled the song around this time period, giving way to the second single off his debut album, Trap Soul. It looks like 2016 was a very good year for KP and Envy. Once again, the song was a hit, peaking at number 26 on the Hot 100 and proving that KP and Envy sample was hot property. Now sometimes when two tracks sound similar in hip hop, there's usually a bit of thievery going on behind the scenes. This is one of those times. Boy Wonder and Vinyls, the producers of Deja Vu, claim that another producer stole the track and gave it to Bryson Tiller. Me and Boy Wonder made that exchange beat first. It was stolen from us by a thief named Foreign Tech. Cole's song was recorded before exchange. I sent this thief a video of me making the Deja Vu beat. A week later, he posted a beat on IG with the same drums. I made him take it down. Vinyls went on to clarify that he had no issues with Bryson Tiller and his issue was solely directed at the producer. The thing is, Bryson Tiller's version came out before J. Cole's, making Cole question whether or not he wanted to use the beat or not. Cole had already made the song, so when Bryson's album came out and we heard it, it was a feeling like, damn, he used the same sample. But to Cole, it don't matter. He's not competing with Bryson. We didn't really know the backstory at the time of what happened with Vinyls and Boy Wonder and Foreign Tech who made the beat. That was none of our concern. At the end of the day, Foreign Tech had to give Boy Wonder and Vinyls credit for exchange, proving that he did in fact steal the beat while KP and Envy sat pretty and collected more checks. Now this situation does get a little bit deeper. Another producer named G Money claimed he made the beat around 2013 and that Tech stole the beat from him. I'm gonna go ahead and just play Shorty So Cold so you get an understanding of my beat from the beginning. <laughs> He then went on to break down how the beat was made from scratch, showing us proof of his theory. According to him, the song was originally called Shorty So Cold, and it has the same feel as the offending tracks. Now, there was a lot of controversy surrounding Envy's race, and it mostly happened years after the song came out. She clearly isn't black, and that made it hard for a lot of people to accept the fact that she made black music. The funny thing is, most people heard the song without seeing the music video, and when they finally saw the music video years later, they were like, whoa, Envy's white. It because word on the street is that the lead singer y'all envy named Susan Hatch, but she might be a white woman. And that's when all the hate began. Some people called it cultural appropriation. But the strange thing is, people actually became more interested in the song after they found out that Envy was white. And that ultimately made the song gain more popularity. At the end of the day, KP and Envy were one hit wonders. They dropped their highly successful single Swing My Way around 1998 and ever since then they failed to recapture that magic because they were not a group to begin with. They were simply put together because somebody at the label thought they would make a lot of money as a pair instead of two individual artists. And that person was right. I personally think they should have dropped more music together. You know, if it's working, why fix it? Now KP and MV do still perform together, ever since Jayco and Bryson Tiller remixed the song, Swing My Way has been given more life, making people more interested in the pair. 
The thing is, since they only have one song that is well known, that's the only song people are interested in hearing from the pair. According to their Spotify page, their most popular songs are Swing My Way, Swing My Way the Remix, Swing My Way Main, Put Your Hands Up, and Swing My Way the Radio Edit. Talk about being a one-hit wonder. Interestingly enough, Ludacris wrote the song's verse, and Mixo, the man who produced the beat Swing My Way, went on to produce one of Outkast's biggest songs, The Way You Move. That's it for me, it's your boy Ali. What happened to KPN Envy in your opinion? Let me know down below. Video requests down below as well. Also add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music. Till next time, Perfect. peace.